It's one of the most common questions people ask you after you've had a baby. Is he sleeping through the night yet? Every parent hopes their baby will eventually stop waking up multiple times at night so they can get some much needed rest. Hey guys, it is 1.40 in the morning. I don't know if you guys hear Jace crying, but he just woke up. It was the one topic I searched the most while I was pregnant as I prepared for my new little sleep thief to arrive. And this has also been my most highly requested video. So today I'll be sharing some of the key steps I took to eventually get my son Jace to sleep through the night by 12-ish weeks. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Nicole and Richie channel. If you're new here, my name is Nicole and I make videos with my husband Richie sharing our home heart and humor. So today's video is actually a pretty controversial topic. There's so many opinions on sleep training and sleep methods and so it is a little bit of a touchy subject but I'm not here to judge anybody or whatever they choose to do with their children. I believe that as moms we really need to support each other no matter what methods we choose because what works best for me and my kids may not work for somebody else and that's okay. So before I get into it, quick disclaimer, I am by no means an expert or a sleeping consultant or anything like that. I am a mom of one boy who has tried a few different things, read up a lot on this topic, and I'm here to just share what's works best for us and hoping that maybe it can help somebody out there. And like I said, everybody just needs to do what's best for them in their lifestyle. So starting off with lifestyle, because I think that's a huge factor in how you're going to sleep train or schedule or maybe not sleep train or schedule. For me, I am working from home full time on YouTube and taking care of my son. So it was very, very important to figure out a schedule for him. It was very important for us to eventually be sleeping through the night and for him to be sleeping through the night, I think that's important for his development. And so the methods I'm sharing today is based on that type of lifestyle, people who like routine and like schedules. Pretty much everything I'm sharing today is from three of my favorite books that I read before I had Jace. Um, I've talked about these before, but just to let you know a lot of what I'm referencing, especially what I'm talking about um, feeding schedules or sleeping schedules are all in the books. So first of all, this book called Bringing Up Bebe, this book is a little bit more on like the philosophy and French style of parenting, but this really helps helped form a lot of my thoughts and opinions around how to raise my baby and thought process around things. Baby-wise, this is a lot more into scheduling and touching on a lot of other things that is really helpful for moms to know. And then this is the same thing, a lot on feeding and sleeping schedules. Both of these books give you actual schedules you can follow. So like I said, anytime I reference a schedule, these are pretty much the books that I used for that. I do believe habits start really early for both the mom and the baby. However, the first month that we were back from the hospital, I did not worry about scheduling. There's already so much change and stress happening as it is. So the first month, I really didn't apply much of this stuff. I will say the two main things that I focused on in that first month with Jace was making sure I'm giving him full feedings when I'm breastfeeding and also trying to incorporate an eat, play, sleep routine. Now, that's not gonna be perfect in the beginning, especially since there's really not any play time for a newborn, but ideally if they do have wake time, I was making sure that that wake time was after he ate so he didn't get into the habit of falling asleep right after eating. And I'll get a little bit more into why that's important. But like I said, I didn't have a lot of rules. So Jace was taking naps like in the living room on his snuggle me, he was taking naps in the bassinet, he was taking naps in our arms. Like he was eating every two and a half to three hours. So we knew that much, but we weren't like hardcore implementing what I'm gonna be talking about today yet. After one month, I was like, I need more structure. I knew it would be the best thing for me and my family, and I also knew that good naps and feedings lead to good nighttime sleep. And obviously we would get more sleep, and overall we would be a functioning, happy family. All right, so let's get right into it. What I did to get Jace to sleep through the night by 12-ish weeks. Number one is consistency. You want to develop a routine for your baby. So that means every time you put them to sleep, it should be in the same spot. So they start to learn, oh, this is my sleep environment. So whether that's the crib or a bassinet, whatever it is, you wanna have the same location every time. And here's a few tips I have on preparing your environment to help your child sleep better. So like I said, consistency is key. Every time you put them down to nap, it should be the same routine bring them in their room, put them in their swaddle, turn on the sound machine, and then turn the lights off. They start to know, okay, this routine means it's time to sleep. And then your actual nighttime routine might be a little bit different, obviously, because you're preparing them to sleep for the whole night. For us, that includes giving him a bath first, then feeding him, and like reading a book, and then putting him in his swaddle, and putting him to sleep, and turning the lights out. So nighttime is a little bit longer, and if you stay consistent with that, they basically associate these patterns with sleep time. Okay, a few other tips that are really important for your environment in the room. 
I've talked about these before, but first of all, sound machine, just about a foot off the head of the bed. We put it super loud also. A lot of people have asked, why is our sound machine so loud? That's what the Moms on Call book says, and we actually noticed when we put it really loud, he sleeps really, really well, so. The other thing is curtains, so we ended up getting some blackout curtains off of Amazon. We close them during daytime naps and at nighttime, obviously. During the day, though, there is still a little bit of sun that comes through, which is totally fine. I think it's good, actually, for them to differentiate daytime naps from nighttime sleep. And last, but definitely not least, is a good swaddle. I've talked about our swaddle before, highly recommend it. I have so many messages from people who have tried it and it's working really great for their kids, helping them sleep better through the night. We use the Nested Bean Zen One Swaddle. It has like a bean bag section on top that puts a little bit of weight on their chest. So it kind of has like a comforting effect, feels like a hand on the baby's chest. Also the sleeves are removable, which is our favorite thing because we recently just transitioned him from basically full swaddle with his arms in to arms out because he did finally roll over in the nighttime from back to front. We found him on his tummy in the morning and we needed to make sure that he was sleeveless. So we took off both sleeves. The other thing is the zipper actually zips from the bottom so you don't have to remove the entire swaddle to change his diaper. I wish we had this swaddle this first three months of life. I swear it would have made our lives so much easier but we didn't know about it yet. So I highly recommend this swaddle. I will link it in the description along with the coupon code for 15% off. JC, I'm almost done baby. You want me to hold ya? All right, Jace has joined us. I gotta go feed him soon. But last tip I wanted to mention is keep naps no longer than two hours. It's important that they are feeding, making sure that they're getting full during the day so they're not getting hungry at nighttime and also that they're just not sleeping a ton so that they still are tired at night. Number two is called the pause. Now I learned the pause from my French book. This is something you can start implementing even from when the baby is born. But essentially the idea is when your baby starts crying, our initial reaction as mothers and fathers is usually to pick up your child right away and rock them or feed them or just basically make them stop crying as soon as possible. This idea encourages you to stop and pause and observe your child before you decide what you're going to do. There are times that your baby might just whine for two seconds and then they're gonna stop. But if you just stop and wait and observe and kind of look at them and see like, what is their need right now? Are they scream crying and you know for sure that they're hungry? You know, take a look at the clock, is it time to feed? Or is it not time to feed yet and they're just whining a little bit and if you just let them sit for 10 seconds, they might stop and there's no reason to pick them up. I know not everybody agrees with this concept. I do because pausing and reading their cues is actually helping you understand your baby more and what their needs are and learning what their cries mean. And that's like a whole other thing I can't get into. I think it's good to have like a set rule of, okay, how long are you going to, you know, wait for your baby to cry? This is a very controversial issue of, is it okay to let your baby cry? I know this is very, very hard for moms. It's been really hard for me in the past sitting and letting him cry. Like two minutes seems like an hour, but there have been many times where I would sit and wait and they would stop crying on their own after a few minutes, which is great because they're starting to learn how to soothe themselves. Give yourself a time limit. Maybe it's two minutes. Maybe you're willing to go to five minutes. So once Jace was around like a month and a half or two months old, if he cried during a nap time or cried at night, we would wait about three to five minutes first and see if he would stop on his own. Many times he did. And we were so glad we like gave him the opportunity to actually soothe himself and fall back asleep. A lot of times they're just in and out of sleep cycles and you just have to give them a few minutes and they'll fall back asleep. But if they don't start crying after your set time, here are some ways that you can actually soothe them without even having to pick them up. Many times if you pick them up out of the crib, that's their expectation moving forward and that's the only thing that's gonna be able to soothe them. But if you actually leave them in the crib and try a few of these things first, you'll be surprised to see how well they work. This is called a Ferris wheel. It's a great technique to settle your baby from crying before you actually put them into their crib for a nap or before going to sleep. And then if your baby wakes up crying during a nap, first thing I would try is rubbing their belly for a few minutes. And if that doesn't work, then try the jiggle. You basically just jiggle their belly like this. And after a few minutes, they usually tend to doze off. I worked really, really well with Jace. I have no idea why, but this was typically what I would end up doing to get him to fall back asleep during nap times. If none of those worked, I would basically just end up giving him a pacifier and that would typically soothe him so that he can fall back asleep. And if none of those worked, then yes, there's times I definitely picked him up and just ended up rocking him back to sleep in the rocking chair. There's no shame in that happening every once in a while. I just didn't want it to become a habit. I learned these techniques from the moms on call book and they worked really well for me. Another set rule from their book that I implemented was at nighttime, if he would wake up crying, I would wait the five minutes, go soothe him. And that had to happen 
three times in total before I picked him up to feed him. Now this is huge because it can actually push your feeding times at night later and later so that eventually you're not feeding them as much. For example, let's say I put Jace to bed at 7 p.m. and he wakes up crying at 10 p.m. Instead of going in and just feeding him right away, assuming that he's hungry, we would let him cry for five minutes, try the soothing techniques, Usually he would go back to sleep. And then if he woke up again, like 30 minutes later, we would once again, let him cry for five minutes, do the soothing techniques and let him do that whole thing one more time before I finally did feed him. It's kind of regulating his body to actually wait longer stretches between feedings. So then the next night, it's like he might wake up at 11 or 12 instead of 10. The Moms on Call book explains this process really well. So if there's any confusion around anything I just said, I would reference the book. Number three, put your baby to sleep in the crib, either awake or drowsy. You do not wanna put them in their crib while they're already sleeping. The idea behind this is you don't wanna do the work for them and rock them to sleep and then lay them down because they're not actually learning how to put themselves to sleep. Now, I probably started implementing this more around like two or three months because obviously when they're newborns and a month old, it is really hard to do this. I totally get it. You wanna rock your baby to sleep. Like you love holding your baby and you're just in love with your child. Like you wanna watch them fall asleep in your arms but in a sense you're doing yourself a disservice because later on it's gonna be very, very hard to get your baby to fall asleep on their own and you're basically training them to fall asleep in your arms. What goes hand in hand with this is the idea of feeding your baby to fall asleep, whether it's on the breast or with a bottle. Once again, it's not following the eat, play, sleep schedule and you're actually teaching them, oh, in order to fall asleep, I feed you. So they start falling asleep on the breast. Once again, contradicting that idea that they need to put themselves to sleep. But here's some tips on how to do that. When you feed your baby, whether you're breastfeeding or with a bottle, feed them in a well-lit area. Perfect example, this room, a lot of sun coming through the window. They're awake, there's usually noise going on in here, like the TV is on or we have music playing. So it's keeping them awake while they're feeding. Keeping babies awake while feeding is so hard, especially when they're just newborns. They are constantly falling asleep at the breast. But like we talked about early, it's really important that they get a full feeding. So we have to keep them awake. I would tickle Jace's toes to try to keep him awake or like rub his back. When I was switching sides for breastfeeding, I would pick him up and try to like wake him up a little bit or I would actually go and change his diaper and that would usually wake him up again so that I can finish up on the other side before he falls asleep. You basically do what you need to do to make sure that they are truly getting a full feeding. This is very challenging at night when you're exhausted and the baby's exhausted and so you want to just hurry up and get a feeding over with but then they just end up waking sooner again if you don't feed them fully. Kind of going along with this when you do a nighttime feeding it should be very business-like. Go in, pick up the baby, turn off the sound machine, breastfeed them, change their diaper, back to sleep. It shouldn't be cuddles, it shouldn't be confusing them, turning the light on, making them think it's daytime. It should be very quick and to the point and get the baby back to sleep right away. So those are my three main tips. I tried to share as much details as possible on how we implemented these things, but when I followed these guidelines, he eventually dropped feedings one after the other. So when he was born, I think I woke up at least four to five times in the night to feed him. And then by the time he was like four weeks, he shifted to three feedings in the night. When he was eight weeks, twice the night, and then 10 weeks, he went down to one feeding a night. I'm pretty sure it was around one in the morning, but then what happened was I realized I should just give him a dream feed. If you've never heard of a dream feed, it's the best thing ever. <laughs> it's basically a feeding that you do around like 10 or 11 p.m. The idea is you do it before you go to sleep so that you can go in the room. Baby's kind of like half asleep still. You give them a quick breastfeeding, put them back down, and then they can sleep through the rest of the night. So I started doing this when he was 12 weeks old. We would put him to sleep at 7 p.m. I would sneak in around 10.30, give him a quick dream feed, and then he would sleep through the rest of the night until seven in the morning. I did the dream feed for I think about three to four weeks and then I tried stopping it to see if he would just sleep 12 hours straight and he basically did. So at this point, he is 19 weeks old. He is sleeping 12 hours through the night. Praise God. We are very happy that this worked for us and it worked for Jace, but I do wanna say it was not easy. As I'm talking about it now, sure I can be happy and excited, but along the way it was very difficult. It was one step forward, two steps back. It was up and down. It was, you know, sleep regressions along the way and growth spurts. And so it was never perfect. But overall, generally, implementing these guidelines actually worked. 
And even along the way, I like Richie was questioning me, like, are you sure this schedule is okay? Are you sure this is a good idea? It's not working yet. He's not sleeping through the night yet. And I just trusted what the book said and I kept going and I really felt conviction that this was going to work for our family. I've never used a sleep consultant, but I've read a lot of information on like taking care of babies, who's a really popular sleep consultant on Instagram. And from what I've seen, they're using a lot of these methods as well. Also, the idea with this is to develop them properly so that you don't have to use the cry it out method. Letting them cry five minutes is not cry it out method. Cry it out is just straight up, I'm gonna let my baby cry for hours in the night for three days in a row and then they'll learn, which yes, probably works, but it doesn't have to be that way. These methods are also teaching your baby how to start self-soothing so that they don't always need you to be soothed when they wake up in the night. So what we've seen personally in our home through choosing these methods is that overall, we're just a more happy functioning home. Jace is developing tremendously and very well. He's obviously growing a ton. He's learning, his brain is growing. Sleep is huge, very important. So it's obviously good for all of us. But I do think it's really important to remember this doesn't work for everyone. I don't wanna misguide anybody. I just want to share what worked for us, but I don't want anyone to compare their situation to mine or think they're not a good mom because it didn't work for them or anything like that. I think it's so important to remember every single baby is different and you are their mom for a reason and you know what's best for them. So please be encouraged. This video is not meant to make anybody feel bad. I'm hoping it will help some people out there. And if you are having trouble and you just at this point don't know what to do with your baby anymore, I would encourage you to contact a sleep consultant. They could probably help you identify some factors that are contributing to your baby not sleeping. And here's the last thing, your baby is more than their sleep. So yes, this question is so popular. Is your baby sleeping through the night yet? And everybody wants to know, but there's so much more to your child than that. They are learning who you are. They might be learning to breastfeed or bottle feed, or maybe their neck is getting stronger or they're starting to turn over or they're like holding things. Like there's so much more to a baby than them sleeping at night. Yes, it's important, but I had to remind myself in those moments where he was totally struggling. Jace is doing great in other areas. Like he's so good at tummy time or he's so observant. So you really have to focus on, okay, what's going well and remind yourself you're doing the best that you can. There was nights where I was up crying or calling my sisters asking for help because I just didn't know what to do anymore. So it was not a perfect journey. Even now, like at the moment he's struggling with naps and we realized, oh, we probably need to transition him to the new schedule and we did and it helped a lot. So there's always different things going on, but I think that if I never implemented any of these things, it would be a thousand times worse. Okay guys, that is all that I have for today's video. I really, really hope it helped people out there. If so, please leave a comment below and let me know. If you're interested in seeing our daily lives, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Nicole and Richie. Leave comments with any other baby type videos you would like to see. As always, we love you guys and appreciate you so much and we will see you in our next video.